Hi, I'm Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify Wireless Networking Solution. This is the third video uh, dedicated to EAP, PEEP and EAP TLS configuration on the Cisco wireless infrastructure. In the first two videos we explained how EAP, PEEP and EAP TLS were working and in the third video we are going to configure the radio server for EAP, PEEP or EAP TLS authentication. Remember, as we said before, EAP TLS and EAP PEEP are similar on the RADIUS part. The RADIUS needs to have a certificate, this certificate needs to be signed by the certification authority, and PEEP is the same process. In this configuration, the ACS is the authentication server. We need a certification authority. It is actually installed on this Windows box. So we have a certification authority which is set here, which is called October, because we are in October. So although these two devices are on the same machine, the ACS is one side and the certification authority is the second side. So we will have them interact with each other, but understand that the secure ACS is the authentication server and that the certification authority is what it is, certification authority. So the first thing we need to do on the ACS is to have it emit a certificate signing request. So if you go to system configuration, an ACS certificate setup, you can generate a certificate signing request. So you're going to give it a name, like for example demo.com. Um, you're going to save the private key because this is going to make the server generate a pair of keys, a public key which is the certificate and a private key which is going to be kept securely on the ACS. Of course, as you... let me rename that properly. As you save the key on the ACS, you need to protect your key with a password. For example, Cisco Cisco. And the key length that you're going to generate has to be 1024 bits long max. If you use more than 1024 bit long keys, IP PIP will fail on Windows boxes. So what we're doing here is generating a pair of keys, public and private keys, and asking the public section of this key to be signed by someone. That's why we call it Generate Certificate Signing Request. So we submit that and that generates on the right side here the Certificate Signing Request. So this is the part that we need to have signed by the Certification Authority. So the way to do it is to simply copy it and then about another browser that would send us to the Certification Authority website when you install a certification authority on Windows you can ask IIS to also be installed so that you can access the certification authority from a web interface so that's what we're doing here so I'm connecting to this sandbox IP address and I'm connecting using the administrator account once connected I'm going to click request a certificate although I'm not really requesting a certificate but simply asking to sign an existing certificate and then I click Advanced Certificate Request and the process is to use the Submit a Certificate Request using a Base64 encoder blah 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 basically that's the certificate signing request that we mentioned before and then I just need to paste here the value I have from my ACS then I click Submit after a few seconds the certificate is issued and this is because I am local on the machine. Uh, if you were accessing from another machine, you would have to go to the certification authority itself, then go to pending request, and there would be the uh, query from your ACS here, and you would have to right click and say issue the certificate. But here, as I um, have um, local access to the machine, it's emitted directly. Okay, next step, I am putting myself back on the ACS site, so to speak, and I'm going to download the certificate to the ACS. So all this is done from the ACS machine accessing the uh, certification authority. I download the certificate and save it as, uh, let's say, demo.cer under C. Okay, I close it. The second thing I need to do is still from the ACS and if you go back to my slide you'll see what I mean 
uh, from the ICS here, I need to trust the certification authority signature. And this is because I'm going to receive certificates from my client. And I'm also going to emit certificates signed by the certification authority. So I need to trust it. So the way this is done is to go back still from the ACS to the certification authority and download the CS certificate chain uh, so that I can trust the certification authority. And I just say install the CS certificate chain. Check the warnings, say OK, and the root certification authority certificate is installed on the ACS server and my ACS now trusts the certification authority. OK, next step, still on my certification, on my, on my ACS, sorry. I go back to the um, ACS configuration. I go back to system configuration, ACS certificate setup, and now I'm going to install the ACS certificate. So this is the certificate I've just downloaded from the certification authority. So you see it's preset here, demo.cer. This is my private key. So this is the certificate I generated a minute ago before asking for the CA signature. So I have this certificate here on this machine. I'm going to install it. Be very careful. When you go back to this screen here, it's done. The certificate has been installed. So the only thing you need to do is to restart the ACS. Be careful because very commonly people click this install new certificate box as if it was installing actually the certificate itself. But it's done already. If you click install new certificate again, you remove the certificate you just installed and you have to restart from zero. Well, you have to reinstall the certificate. So as soon as you've clicked the submit button in the screen before, the only thing you need to do is to restart the server, restart the ACS. So you don't need to re-click this box. So to restart the ACS, I go to service control and restart at the bottom. After a few seconds, the ACS is restarted, and the next step is to go back to system configuration, ACS certificate setup. And now what you want to do is to tell the ACS that you do trust the certification authority that you've just uh, installed the certificate. So you click Edit Certificate Trust List, and in the list you should see quite a few certificates, basically all the certification authorities that have been installed on this machine. And as you see, there is the October box. So I'm going to say that I'm trusting October Certification Authority. So be careful. If you look at the steps, the first step was to generate a certificate on the ACS. Second step was to ask the Certification Authority to sign it. Then we installed the certificate on the ACS. But then, of course, we need to download the certificate from the, AC the Certification Authority and then trust the certificate so that we can trust its signature. So this is a four-step process, so don't get confused. OK, so I'll go back to System Configuration, and I'm going to reboot my ACS once more. At this step, the ACS is ready. It has a certificate. The certificate was signed by the Certification Authority. The Certification Authority signature was validated by downloading the Certification Authority certificate itself. And then we say that we are trusting the certificate. So everything is ready on the authentication server. You can now tell your ACS that it can support all the authentication mechanisms that we saw. So you go to System Configuration, Global Authentication Setup, and you can allow IPTLS. By the way, it's funny to notice that on my version 4.2 here, I have IPTLS twice at the bottom and at the top of the screen. Uh, by the way, you can also allow PIP and within PIP, MSJAP v2 or GTC, because again, PIP is going to rely on a certificate on the authentication server, which is what we have here. Of course, if we use PIP, we'll probably have to add the username and password, and we'll do it later on in the next video. In PIP, you allow MSJAP, so you'll need to say MSJAP v2 or v1 or both. I do both. Submit and restart, and the authentication server part is done.